unless I happen to die in a freak accident or I suddenly come down with a terminal disease or illness of some kind, there will be human beings on the planet Mars in my lifetime. In fact, it's not going to be that far away. There will no doubt be an entire space station and then some established on Mars in my lifetime. This morning, we had the Orion spacecraft, spaceship from NASA, set up on the launch pad, ready to go. There were a couple of technical glitches and the launch window was missed. They're going to try again tomorrow. And my understanding is what's going to happen is they're going to shoot it way out there and it's going to orbit uh, the Earth at a considerable distance for a while and then the capsule's going to come down in the, in the Pacific Ocean. Um, this, is, this is rolling back to kind of older technology. We had the space shuttles that would fly back in. Uh, these, these craft, I guess, Orion, uh, is, a, is a capsule design that's basically going to fall back in and, um, and land in the ocean. Um, but this is preparatory, my understanding is. This, this launch that's going to happen any day now is preparatory to um, sending this craft up to the planet Mars with people. And there's a lot of folks that are excited about this uh, because it's such a big breakthrough. I mean, we just had, we just had a, a drone landed on a comet and there's talk that even this Orion spacecraft might be used for, for that kind of purpose, to land it on a comet. Um, you know, my immediate reaction to this was to start looking at it ethically. Oh, should we be expanding? Should we be going and colonizing other places, other planets, and this kind of a thing? It was an ethical kind of a question. Should we be doing this? Really, I don't think that's a question. Um, at least not one that is is worth committing a lot of energy to because whether we should or not, we're going to. I mean, this is going to happen. Um, the bigger question, I guess, is why is it going to happen? And I think that what the public was sold on, and my, it, you know, what was in my mind as an immediate reaction was this idea that we would go to another planet and somehow terraform it uh, to create a livable environment for human beings, you know, as a as a satellite to Earth, basically, as some place we can go and we can we can live. This is what I think is the fascinating aspect um, for the public, the buy-in, and I think that we're being lied to. I don't think that that, that is going to happen at all, uh, because if we were so good at terraforming, if we were so capable of doing that kind of thing, why is it that we face right now... Um, potential extinction here on Earth? Why is it that we can't even live here in a way that is uh, beneficial to our future and to the vitality of the life system? We have been at war, basically, with the life system for at least 150 years, for all of the, all of the major industrialization era. And people are calling this um, a, a new geological epoch, the, or epoch, or however you say it, um, the Anthropocene. And this is a, this is a time of um, incredible species loss, an extinction event that's unprecedented on the planet. And it's, and it's due to us. And we have, you know, the, the climate change is going 
on this do to us. I mean, not that climate change hasn't been part of the history of this planet, but hasn't been caused by a species. Um, we are really, you know, when I'm, when I'm, even this drive to work that I do every morning, this hour-long drive to work, I'm driving across a landscape that used to be very recently and throughout a long history this was like the Serengeti of the Americas. There were millions and millions of ungulates, bison, elk, deer, moving across this landscape that is now empty. There were grizzlies, there were wolves, abundant. Now it's empty. Now it's monocrop agriculture. We don't know how to how to live in a sustainable way right here on the planet that is our home. Do people really think that we're gonna go to Mars and somehow create a lush um, environment that will support life there? It's ridiculous. That's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing going to Mars. And that's what people have, that's what I think probably the general public has in mind. Certainly that's the first thing that came into, into my thoughts um, when I saw the, the launch being attempted this morning and the, and the talk around it. But that's not where we're going. That's not why this whole thing is being funded. What we're doing, the whole purpose of this it's not, it's not space exploration. It's not going up there to do, to learn something, to, you know. Those are all kind of fringe benefits that we're going to get. Um, the scientists are going to get to do their thing. They're going to get to do some learning up there. But it's going to be while they're serving their masters, who are the funders. And what are the funders interested in? The funders are interested in what kind of resources can we mine from that planet and bring back here to sustain the industrial lifestyle that we've become addicted to. That's what's really, in my opinion, that's what's behind this. This is 100% a mining speculation um, this is going to be something of a gold rush basically um, by the rich by these huge uh, mega energy corporations to see what's out there what can, what can we tap what resources can we tap? If we if we get on a comet that's made of ice, you know, can we break big chunks of that off, throw it in a capsule and drop it back down to the Pacific Ocean where we can take advantage of it? Where we can use it in some manner to support our uh, failing lifestyle here? Can we keep this up? Even though everything you know, all the evidence here tells us this cannot be kept up with the Earth's own resources. This is why we're going out there. We're going out there to tap the resources of some of another planet and bring it here. And I guess why not, you know? I mean, this is, it's going to happen. That's what they're doing. Um, is it going to be able to save us? That's another good question. Is it going to be able to allow us to continue with this um, abiotic addiction that we have? This lifestyle, this culture. That's a that's a good question. Um, I don't think so long term, but I could be wrong. You know, and certainly these companies—they don't even think long term. They think short term. What's gonna What's gonna benefit us? They're looking, you know, 50, 100 years down the road. 
harvest becomes very important. If we can get there and we can bring resources back here in a way that's somehow affordable, even if we crank up prices here or whatever to make it happen with our fictive, you know, money thing that we got going on, you know, no big deal. Um, let's do it. So that's what I see. That's what I see. And I do, I do see though that there are some potential, uh, some really big potential dangers to doing this. And I think the biggest one um, would be a biological hazard. Um, what happens when we introduce microbes from another planet here to Earth? That even even that a single cell organism is all it would take to potentially radically change life on Earth um, and potentially extinguish our presence here. Uh, it would be it would be that easy just a single celled organism from some other place in the cosmos some other place in the solar system bringing that single celled organism back here and um, if it's alive who knows what it could do who knows what what it could do in an environment it, it may not have any any kind of uh, natural predators here uh, that are going to be able to deal with it and it could change things dramatically this is the one thing that i see as um, as a real bona fide threat because if they're telling us that you know these comets <laughs> Um, are made of, you know, water. Anywhere that where there's water, where there used to be water. If there used to be water on Mars, or if there still is, in some way, locked locked inside the landscape. Anywhere where there's water, I think that I personally think that there's life. Even on. Even if it's on the smallest scale, I suspect that there's life. Water is life. Water and radiation. You got those two things, you got life. So that's my my biggest concern with this whole thing. You know, it's it's one thing that they're sh that they're putting the public on, that they're telling us this story. They were going to terraform other places and, and you know, create this expanded um, satellites of home. It's one thing to be bullshitting us like that. It's another thing to be going out there and bringing back a, uh, <coughs> you know, a potential <laughs> death dealer um, to us. Just, just so that they can go out and look for resources to mine to keep up this abiotic um, attack on the life system that we're engaged in. I don't know. Those are my thoughts on it. Interested to hear everybody else's.